I'm continuing on with my 31 days of Halloween reviews with The Breed. The Breed is a 2006 horror film which is available to watch on Tubi right now in Australia if you want to check it out. And this is executive produced by Wes Craven who also produced Pulse. If you want to see my review of Pulse, I have a review up for it on my channel if you want to check it out. And I have reviewed both Pulse films. I have I reviewed both uh, Pulse and Pulse 2 Afterlife, if you want to check out my reviews for them, uh, they're up on my channel to watch. And I'm continuing on my Wes Craven, my, my Wes Craven reviews with The Breed. Um, and before I uh, go on, I just want to say I do have a few other Wes Craven reviews coming this month. Um, I will have a review up for, for A Nightmare on Elm Street and Wes Craven's A New Nightmare and My Soul to Take. Um, so yeah, keep a lookout for those reviews uh, coming throughout October. I do have a big schedule this month. There are a lot of horror movies um, I, I have to watch and I have to do reviews on. So uh, as I said in my Pulse review, there might be uh, one or two movies that I that I do uh, miss because I do have a life outside of YouTube. I also have to focus on them. Also, uh, working on the Stalker Part to the Final Chapter at the moment. So. Uh, so there's a lot that I have to uh, work on. So, um, but I am trying my best to keep up with these reviews. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Like uh, I'll I'll ever I'll ever post a review up. Like I'll still post a review up if I miss a day. I'll post a review up on like my Twitter or Instagram. So uh, go ahead and follow me over on my social medias because that's where you'll be able to see some of my uh, Halloween reviews if I miss them on my channel. But like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to try and keep up. But anyways, um, The Breed. So this is a movie I went into open-minded. I have I had no idea going into this movie what the story was. I had no idea what it was about. All I knew was that Wes Craven was involved in this movie somehow um that's all i knew i didn't see any trailers i didn't see any sort of marketing material for this movie i went into it completely blind which like i've said in the past i like to do that with some movies i like to go into um movies open-minded because it can make sometimes the movie experience better if there's a twist if there's twists and turns it could make uh, it could make the movie experience much better or it could be the opposite of that. It could make it worse. Um, which, in this case, The Breed this isn't the greatest movie ever made. And did I expect it to be? No. I was just looking for a fun horror movie. And did this movie have have some fun moments in it? Sure. Yeah, yeah sure it did. Um, but there is a lot... In this movie, I am I'm a mix on this movie as far as my as far as my opinion on this movie goes. Like there's things in this movie um, I think are good. There's elements of this movie I think are good, and then there's other elements that are, I think are quite bad. So let's start off on the positives because that's the shortest list. So um, as far as positives, the acting I think is pretty decent by everyone uh, due to the uh, script. Um, I think everybody I think everybody does a good job with their character, um, which I will get into the characters soon. But, yeah, the acting by everyone, like, everybody, like, I felt like was doing a serviceable job on, on screen. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to really add. Like, it's, yeah, they did a decent job. So... Uh, and some of the uh, some of the blood makeup uh, that looks really good in the movie as well. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, there were some okay directed moments. Yeah, I guess that's really about it for positives. So let's move over to the negatives because I have a bigger list on the negative side of things. And I did not take notes down. I probably should have, but uh, I, I forgot that. So anyways, the negatives, the editing. And this isn't my biggest problem, but there's a few scenes in this movie where 
one scene in particular where Akota says, oh, I'm not going out there. Because um, the characters like uh, like they're safe inside this house with which the dogs can get into easily by just jumping through the window. But yeah, one of the characters says, "Oh, I'm not going out there." And then the very next shot, I'm not joking here. This is I'm not being comedic. The very next shot is him outside. So it goes from him saying, oh, I don't want to go out there, to, oh, he's out there. There's no reasoning there. It's just, he says it, and then the very next shot is him out there. Is him outside after he exactly said, I'm not going out there. There is no reasoning. There is no scene where his friends are convincing him, like, oh, we have to stick together. There is not a single scene where they're talking to him and he's, um, and, and, and they're trying to, like, support him and they're trying to make him go outside. There's not a single scene of them convincing him. It just goes from him saying, I'm not going outside, to him immediately outside. The very next shot is him outside. No reasoning. Why? That scene stood out to me so much when watching this movie. And there's, like, not all the scenes are like that, but that scene in particular stood out to me as a really bad editing choice. Like, surely there was, like, a scene they cut out. Like... It would have made like it would have made the chemistry between everyone a lot. It would have made the chemistry and the relationship between everyone a lot more caring. It would have developed like they all care for each other. Like they want to see everybody survive. They don't want to see their best friend or or their girlfriends get eaten. But no, there's it just goes from him saying it to him outside, just like that. No reasoning, no talking him into it. So, yeah, anyways, that's just like, that's just a scene that really stood out to me. Um, like, the, the editing for some scenes in this movie flow pretty well. Um, like, the editing is obviously not the best, but when you have an editing choice like that, why would you cut it? It's just, it, it feels... Especially with a line like, I don't want to go outside. You should have something to back that up. You should have something to kind of give reasons. I mean, we kind of know, like, as a viewer, why he doesn't want to go outside. But, like, it's the the edit, the to see editing is just, it was so... I guess a jarring like for me to watch because like it, it stood out to me so much. But anyways, I felt like I've I feel like I've I've um, talked. Um, I feel like I've repeated myself a few times. So I'm just going to move on to the next point. The characters. What characters? There is no such thing as characters in this movie. There is no character development in this movie. The very minimal character development we get in this movie is that one of the female characters is a virgin. I don't give a shit. It's like the movie It has an effective opening scene. It has a good opening scene. And then we cut to these characters arriving on the island. And we don't know how these characters are related. Like, are they brother or sister? Are they best friends? How long have they known each other? Like, we don't know any of that. We're supposed to just kind of accept it. We're supposed to just kind of buy it as the viewer. That that these people are friends. But the movie doesn't give you any good reason to actually care for them and when shit does go down in the second and third act you don't care if the characters die there is no emotional impact on the viewer you you just kind of go along with it it's because this movie gives you no solid reason to care for its characters 
Like maybe if there was, uh, I mean, I mean, character development. Characters are important in a horror film. You have to care for your characters before shit goes down. And this movie has plenty of time to develop on to develop on the characters throughout the first act because the first act is kind of is kind of viewers it's kind of hanging out with hanging out with this a uh, group of friends and because shit doesn't get real until probably act two until the start of act two um so the whole of act one and then like there is uh, like another piece of character development where this guy like wants to be a vet or whatever um but it's we it's yeah, okay, I've lost words at how bad the character development is in this movie. Um, it's, I didn't care when the characters were, were getting killed in this movie, because um, the screenplay to this movie didn't give me any good reason to care for its characters. There isn't enough development for me to actually care for them. If you want, If you want me to care for them, Make your characters more believable. Next point I'm going to be talking about is the script. I've hinted at the script in my last point by saying that the screenplay offered nothing to the characters. And I'm just going to expand on that more with this point. The script, this is filled with some of the most idiotic dialogue from these characters. And one of the most laughable scenes I have seen in a horror movie in ages. And it includes, there's a scene which a dog is attacking one of the characters. And he has a bow and arrow and he's shooting the dog. And he launches the arrow and the arrow goes into the character's leg. So Monayat, the dog's, the dog was attached to the character's leg and then somehow he horribly missed somehow which i don't know how you can miss that i honestly don't the like you, you have to see the scene to believe it but it's when that scene happened i had i had the biggest laugh that's the easily the biggest laugh in this movie and the scene wasn't supposed to be funny. Like, you're supposed to be like, oh, this this character has just got shot. We are supposed to feel sympathy. Well, you should have f thought about that from the beginning movie by building believable and interesting characters. You don't. So the scene, and plus just the way it's shot, the way it's executed, it just feels so, like, so laughable. Like, it's... Like, you know the guy's going to miss, because this movie, by the end of this movie, this movie goes from bad to worse to ultra worse. Spoiler warning, I'm going to talk about uh, this movie's ending, so if you want to see The Breed, I don't encourage you to, but if you want to watch this movie... Uh, go ahead uh, and pause this video right here and go watch it and then come back to this video and continue watching. So let's talk about the ending to this movie. So they, the original location, so they like they hired this cabin and the ending is they, uh, is they, they find a way to they find a way to escape this cabin without the dogs attacking them. And they go to this, um, what is it, like this, uh, I don't know, like this asylum treatment area for dogs or something. I don't know. Um, but anyways, they go to this, like, this place in the, that's, that's kind of blocked off. Like, there's a fence around it and all, um, and there's a radio there, and there's, like, there's a satellite, and there's all of that. So they can contact someone to, to come and pick them up. So the way they escape the house um, is they is they find an old car in the shed, which one of the characters um, goes to early on in the movie, and she tries to start it up. It doesn't work. So what the characters do is they kind of is they kind of push it out just to just to kind of get it, just to kind of give, give it a little push just to kind of get it started. And 
Yeah, and then it works. Um, and then they, and then that's how, so that's how they escape the house. And then they go over to this, uh, like this satellite, this satellite uh, asylum treatment thing for dogs. Um, I don't know what the, the exact place is called, but it's a place where they, where there's been experiments done on dogs. Um, and there's a there's a satellite there, so they can contact someone. And there's a radio in there which uh, which doesn't work at first. And then right at the end, when the characters get off the island, they find this boat which the uh, uh, which the character in the opening scene um, had, which we see him. Uh, get brutally eaten about maybe 20 minutes into the movie. Um, and so, yeah, they find his boat, they get on his boat, um, and they leave. And this is where this movie really pissed me off. I hate when horror movies um, do... I hate when horror movies do the final jump scare. Like, one last final jump scare before the credits. I hate when horror movies do that. It's not effective and it's not scary. And so what does this movie do? So they're on so they're on this boat in the middle of nowhere. There's there's only water surrounding them. And one of the characters likes like um like opens this door and a dog was hiding in there um for how long? I have no idea. And jumps out the screen. See, now that's what I mean. That's what I mean is by one last final jump scare for the audience. I hate that technique. It's been done to death in horror movies. It is old now. It is old. And this movie came in 2006. It was old even way before then. And it's still being used in, 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 uh, in today's modern horror movies. I hate that technique. It's been done to death. It's it, it's not effective. It's not scary. It's 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 honestly just a prophetic technique. I mean jump scares I mean there is some good suspense in this movie. I will say that. I will give it that. And there is some okay suspense in this movie like the first couple of scenes where the dogs appear there is some good suspense and there was some good and there was some uh some really good suspense in the opening scene of this movie which i thought was really good might i add and so I i'm not saying jump scares are bad i just hate jump scares that that are fake jump scares which this movie does have uh quite a few false scares where a character ever um where a character ever closes the fridge door there's a character standing behind the fridge that's a scene in in this movie and like the first couple of scares are false scares and then once it actually starts getting to the dogs there's there's some okay there's some okay scares. That's hard for me to say because I wasn't really scared watching this movie. So I'm not hating on jump scares. I just hate, like, I just hate those one last final scare for the audience. I don't like that technique at all. I think it's, I think it's pathetic. I think it's been done to death. I hate it. And there was a movie I watched like I watched last year. It was like it was a Blumhouse movie. Um, it was like a VOD one. Um, I can't remember what it was uh, called, but it did the one last final jump scare, and I hated it. And I thought that would, I would be the last one I would ever have to see. And then I watched The Breed, which also does it. Um, I just don't like that technique so anyways like I, I like scares that are well built up and have good suspense to them i like those scares 
Um, and then, and like I said, the movie has some okay makeup in it. Um, the movie has one funny line. The rest of the humans movie really falls flat. There was one joke in this movie where one of the characters is talking about Bambi, which I had a good laugh at. But that's honestly about it when it comes to moments that were actually funny. And this movie is like, this movie is very B grade. Like you can definitely tell just watching the movie that, that it's like the movie, it, it, like it's taken itself very seriously, but it's also like a B grade, uh, like a movie. Um, and like the, the, the way, the, the way the characters act and all that. Actually, yeah, like before I talk about everything else, like I have so much on my mind at the moment. And these scripts, I just want to go back to the script for a minute. The script, um, at a point in this movie, this is probably about halfway through the second act, the characters, the characters, it doesn't even feel real. It just feels like, um, like the characters, like once all the dogs, once all the dogs come get into the house and they start attacking the characters, uh, the characters go up to the basement, which is their only safe spot. Um, and it just, it, it, it honestly felt just like, it felt very forced, it's just that portion of the movie. I mean, it, it makes sense, because there's all dogs in, in, like, every room. Like, there's about, there's about, like, freaking, like, 50 dogs in this movie. And the and the all, the like, some are in the house, some are outside, are guarding the outside, and then some are inside hunting these characters. And so, yeah, the characters go up to the basement, which just, it, it felt so forced on script. Um, it just felt like this movie was so desperate to get its characters in the basement to discover the experiment part of this movie. And then that's where, then that's where the ending goes. Is so that they find out, they drive away. Um, I think they find that they find this gate, like um, that's where there's like a satellite, and the other gates locked. And when they go to investigate it, there's all like there's like this dog attacker suit, um, and there's all these like rooms and all that. It's like it's a very dusty area, and that actually brings up another point: is the house. Like these characters haven't been back to this house. Like I'm. This might be like a false statement. The movie never really addresses it, at least from memory. Um, which I just finished watching the movie. Which um, so the the these characters haven't been back to this house. I want to say since they were kids because they talk about like how they had like how they had like a lot of fun at this house when like when they were kids and all that. Um, and this was like his this was like his house growing up, and he has a lot of fun mem- a lot of fun memories here. Wouldn't the house be all dusty and all that? It's, I was just thinking, because when they actually enter the house, the house is all very polished and very clean. Like, the basement obviously has spider webs and all and, and shit, but it just, when they enter the house, it's not dusty, it's all, like, clean. It looked like it was honestly clean the day before. And it's just, it's just, I'm like, I'm maybe, who knows, maybe these characters weren't there the month before, but the movie never really states it. Um, unless like someone stayed there, but looks like this is like a private island. So, but yeah, this the house isn't even like covered in spider webs or there's no like the dust. There's there's nothing. It's all clean. So yeah, that that's just like another thing I, I picked up on. I might be I might be being too harsh. When I say that, talking for long enough, um, like you guys get the point that I I wasn't a big fan of this movie. Wes Craven, like, what did he see in this script? Like, I have no idea because the script of this movie and just the ending, it's the characters. Like, what did Wes Craven see in this movie? I mean, dude, you did a Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream. You, you're better than this. Like, e- e- like even if it's just, for, like, even if it's just a producer credit, it's he still had an involvement in the movie. Like, what did you 
seen this movie to say, yes, I want to do this project. Like, I mean, like, um, who knows? Maybe you got, maybe you got like a very early draft that was way better than the final movie we got. I'm hoping that's, that's it. I'm hoping there was a good script for this movie that he read that made him go, yes. Um, but yeah, like, I'm like, I'm not trashing Wes Craven here. I'm, I'm, I'm trashing the director for, for making these certain choices in this movie. I've talked for long enough. Um, I wasn't, I, I really just wanted to e express my hate for this movie. I mean, like I said, there's good parts in the movie, but as far as rewatchability, like if I want to watch a West Craven movie, I have a Nightmare on Elm Street on my shelf back there that I can just go pull off and watch whenever. I, I have Scream that if I want to watch a West Craven movie, I can go watch that. If I want to watch Who's Have Eyes, I can go watch that. This movie, I can't see myself ever revisiting. So, anyways, they are my thoughts on The Breed. So, if you have seen The Breed, let me know down in the comments what did you think of it. Did, did you like it? Did you think it was mad, or did you really not like it? Let me know all your let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. So, anyways, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your night, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.